This is incredible. No. Look at that. I am very excited because it's the first time that I get snow in Chicago. I've had plenty of cold here before, but this time is going to be even colder. It is just below freezing right now, but temperatures are going to plummet really quick and tonight will be negative 20 at Celsius, that is negative 5 in Fahrenheit, but it feels like temperature is going to be much lower because this storm is coming with quite a bit of wind as well. So I'm going to show you what I'm doing, how I'm getting ready and prepared to shoot out there for three hours in terms of camera gear, clothes and everything else. And we'll, we'll get into that later, but let's hit the streets first. The snow started to come down pretty late, around 1.30 p.m., so that wasn't going to give me a lot of time to shoot with daylight. Still, I was very excited, not only because of the snow, in the end we didn't end up getting that much anyway, but what I really wanted was the atmosphere of a snowstorm surrounded by big buildings. And of that I got plenty. I knew I wanted to be by Lake Michigan and photograph downtown from there, to have some distance between me and the buildings. And also because that should give me some chances to capture scenes with a clear background if I was to face the lake itself. Sadly, some walking paths were closed because of the conditions, but that's just another photo opportunity, right? Now, this is what I was talking about. See those buildings in the background? The way they look in the storm? That is exactly what I was hoping for. It looked incredible. I wanted a clearer view of downtown and I knew of the perfect place to get it from. I had made some images from there in the past, but these were by far the best conditions I ever had there. Temperatures were plummeting really quick, and the blowing snow was hitting my face, something not very pleasant. So, even though taking your stuff out in these conditions is always a monumental task, I stopped really quick to put my face mask on. This single piece of clothing made a huge difference. Let's talk about clothes for winter photography now. So, as I said, it's going to be very, very cold, so it's important to wear a lot of clothes, and I'm wearing a lot of clothes today. I have two layers of pants, I have two t-shirts, I have two sweaters, I have my coat, I have this thing for my neck to keep it warm, I'm not gonna wear it just yet because it's not that cold right now, but I also have this ski mask that I'm gonna put on my head so I don't have as, as much skin exposed to the cold. I also have my hat, I also have double socks, I'm gonna have double gloves. Everything is very important so I can stay out there for those three hours that I, I'm planning on being out there. One thing I didn't have in Chicago is this goggles. Even though my face was protected, my eyes were not, and the wind made it very difficult for me to pay full attention to finding images around. 
So this should help, and I can't wait to try it out during the next blizzard. As I said, I wore two pairs of socks, one thinner inner layer and a thicker outer layer. The problem is that that was a very tight fit for my hiking boots, so that was probably a mistake because it was rest restricting blood circulation to my feet. I've learned that it's probably better to just wear one layer of socks and have warm blood reaching your toes instead. I mean, I wasn't too concerned about the cold in Chicago at this time because I could always go to a coffee shop or somewhere else if the cold got too extreme, too intense. But if you're gonna be out in the wilderness, you should be very careful and you should be very aware of how much cold you can take and be prepared for it. I'm not an expert on this topic. I've never spent long periods of time outside in extreme conditions so please do your own research and if you have any tips or how to improve my kit uh, winter kit please leave a comment down below with your suggestions okay back to the video there weren't many people around but some still found a way to enjoy the miserable weather including other photographers hello yeah <laughs> It's a beautiful day. It's very beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> this, this is what I had in mind before the storm came. Find a subject, place the buildings of downtown Chicago in the background, swallowed in the storm, and profit. Can I ask you for a favor? Yeah, sure. Uh, do you mind standing like right there? My friend's oh, actually sure. coming soon to get proposed to his girlfriend. Oh, it's okay. A terrible day, obviously, but yeah. going to... looking at you? Yeah, looking at me. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. When you have extraordinary conditions like these ones, almost anything will work. The most boring stuff will look amazing. I'd say that especially that kind of stuff will look better because of the contrast between the mundane and the out of the ordinary. So beautiful, man. This is incredible. Now they just turn on the lights. She's gonna make everything even better. The night was indeed going to bring new opportunities for photography. I almost wish there were no branches here. Beautiful. Come on, let's go. I don't have an hour and a half. Well, should be plenty, but I can never get enough of these days. Let's see this one. I love to photograph street lights when it's still not totally dark, especially, of course, in the middle of a snowstorm. The viewfinder is so messed up All right. All right. 
temperatures kept dropping as the night was looming and the cameras were about to take a beating. And by the way, let's talk about camera gear. When it comes to cameras, I'm thinking about doing most of my photography with the A7R and this 28 to 200 zoom lens and this plastic bag to protect it from the snow. So indeed, I did a lot of photography uh, in Chicago with the A7R and the 28 to 200, but I also had the A7 IV with the wide angle lens, the 17 to 28. And good thing I did because I should have known better, but of course, being in a town like Chicago with very tall buildings around you, a wide angle lens is pretty useful. Even though it's pretty much empty, I'm bringing my backpack for two reasons. The first one is that it will protect my back from getting wet from the snow and also from the cold, from the wind. And when I come back here to the, uh, to the room, to the hotel room, I'm going to keep my uh, camera gear in there so it doesn't change, it doesn't experience that sudden change in temperature from freezing temperatures outside to 70 degrees in here because condensation can be really bad. I do have a couple lenses here just in case. I also have my compact camera I might need it just in case something happens to the other one. I have this little tripod. I'm gonna be recording video mainly with the GoPro that you can see here that I'm gonna attach to my chest with, this, uh, with uh, these uh, straps and even though I don't think I'm gonna need them today it's better to be safe than sorry. I have spikes just in case it gets icy out there. When it's this cold, batteries don't do very well. They die really quick. It's not that they drain really quick. I think it's just they don't work properly. So it's very important to keep your batteries as warm as possible. So I have a few in my uh, inner pants, my uh, underpants, and I have the rest of my batteries here uh, under my coat and under my first sweater. I have them in my second layer of uh, sweaters, if, if you will. And uh, what I'm doing with the GoPro, because it's gonna be outside and in front exposed to the cold, I have a cable that you can see here that I'm gonna plug into this power bank that I'm gonna keep in my pocket and hopefully that will keep the GoPro recording for a little bit longer. I don't know how if this is gonna work. I don't know if the GoPro is going to die, but I have to try. So the GoPro did end up dying as soon as it got dark. It's uh, disappointing because I have this camera specifically for those more extreme situations where I don't want to damage my cameras or where my other cameras directly won't work. It was cold, but it wasn't that cold. I think it was around negative 8 degrees Celsius. 17 Fahrenheit when this camera stopped working. I mean, I guess it's still better than previous times when I used this camera in cold situations. It died much faster than this time in Chicago, so the power bank helped, but it still, it didn't avoid the eventual dying of this camera. And full disclosure, this is a GoPro 7, so it's already a few years old, but I don't think I really doubt that the newer models have improved much in this sense. I don't know. Anyway, let's go back to Chicago. At this point, I was still feeling warm and energized, mostly excited about the dimming light. I thought that would make for slightly more dramatic images if only the blizzard picked up again. I was now heading towards Millennium Park, where I was hoping to get a better chance of photographing some trees in the snow and some buildings, of course. Okay, the first battery dead. Okay, this one is warm and thirsty. So 
It should work. I love this with the lights on the bottom. That's so cool. You can't tell from this view, but I was in full happiness mode from here on. I don't know what it is about miserable weather that makes me feel so alive. Not just me, but it makes everything around me feel and look alive. Very peaceful and calm, even in a town as big as Chicago. This spot got potential. If you wonder how someone could feel like being in a very remote place while being next to a highway and buildings thousands of feet high, housing thousands of people, this is how. In this spot it was impossible to see the buildings. The blizzard was raging good by then and there were no footprints in the snow anywhere around me. Everything was untouched. I was alone. So f***ing cool. Okay. That is until I wasn't anymore. Oh no, no. They're gonna ruin my photos. No. No. That's not cool. I like the path with snow. Now it's not the same. So beautiful, man, with the uh, buildings in the background with the first lights of the night. So cool here. It's just there are way too many trees. I've been trying to find one tree here because this is gonna be one tree that stands against all of those buildings. But so far, I don't know, I don't know. It kept getting colder and colder, and by now I was starting to feel it, so were my cameras. The condensation in my viewfinder froze and made it very hard to see clearly. I love when I find trees that seem to be playing with each other. This scene right here needed a bit more of light, but I think it still made for a good image. Even though I didn't realize it, at first it was getting very windy and nothing better than a street light to show it. It was by this point that the GoPro started to struggle staying alive. It was going to die very soon, but it was okay because I was also ready to head back. 
I was getting tired and cold and even though I still managed to make some images I thought they were coming out too dark and too contrasty. But it was on the way back that I made one of my favorites of the day. An image that I could have made any other day, but it's the atmosphere that made it special. I love shooting in bad conditions. Being in Chicago during this snowstorm was a lot of fun and I can't wait for the next snow. But this weather usually comes with some serious consequences for normal life. After that beautiful afternoon out on the streets, I basically got stuck in the hotel room for almost 48 hours. With feels like temperatures reaching negative 40 degrees Celsius, and hey, that's the same amount in Fahrenheit, it was just too cold to be out there. As you can probably tell by looking at the frozen window I had in my room, that was crazy. I had to melt a little hole with my finger to get a glimpse of the outside. Anyway, I finally got on a train that was going to take me to Indiana, where I'll be patiently waiting for the next snowstorm. I hope you liked the video in frozen Chicago. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.